Welcome, I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. In this video, we're gonna to continue to interact with a recent video from Stand the Standing for Truth channel. Uh, we want to consider the presuppositions that are held by those that believe in once saved, always saved, particularly the free grace version of once saved, always saved. So go, let's go ahead and take a look at a clip here. If you could lose your salvation, everybody would lose it every day. There's never been a moment of my life that I deserved my salvation, not one second. I don't understand people who believe they can lose their salvation. I think it's just insane. I think, I think it's actually, I'll call it an evil doctrine to, mm. to say you could lose it. Because if you say that, you're kind of hinting, hint, hint, hint that you deserve it, don't you? Yeah. Right. That's real stupid. Go ahead. So what is the argument here? The argument is, if somebody thinks that they can lose their salvation, that there's some condition that they must keep and that they must abide in in order to keep their salvation, that means that by implication, they believe that they deserve eternal life, that they deserve salvation. And so the only way to say that we uh, receive salvation as a gift is that there are no conditions with it, that we don't have any conditions we have to abide in or continue in, but that no, it's just a gift. And since it's a gift, then we receive it. We don't deserve it. We don't earn it. And so the implication here is that somebody that believes that somebody can lose their salvation or lose eternal life, then they believe that they have earned or that they deserve eternal life. Before we consider some biblical text and consider this presupposition and, and ask whether it's biblical or not, first let's ask the question, or let me share an analogy to show us that in, something can be conditional and yet also be a gift that we did not earn. Uh, so imagine I've got, uh, so right now I have a 17-year-old son, so this is not imagine, I have a 17-year-old son, and imagine I tell him, look, I'm going to buy you whatever car you want from that particular car dealer. I'm going to buy it for you. I'm going to give it to you. But I have a condition. You first have to study. You have to learn. And you have to go and take this driver's test. And so you have to pass the driver's test and get your driver's license. So he does it. He sets himself to uh, get the driver's license. He studies it. He gets it pretty quick. And then before he even comes to me, he goes to the car dealer. And he goes to the car dealer and he says, look, I got my license and I want that red car over there. And he says, now give me my car. I've earned it. I have the driver's license, so give me the red car. What will the car dealer say? The car dealer will say, wait a second, bro. You've got to pay for this. You can't just get it because you've got a driver's license. You know, it's great that you have a driver's license and all, but I want your money. I don't want the driver's license. Okay, and then, okay, okay. So then he goes back and he gets his dad and he brings his dad and he says, okay, dad, now my dad's with me. My dad said that I can have it. Okay, so now give me the car. And he says, no, your dad has to give me money. So then the dad gives the money, pays for the car, gives it to the son. And then the son goes and drives off. He goes to his friend's house and he says, look, I earned this car. I, I, I paid for this car. I deserve this car because I got a driver's license. That would be ridiculous. Of course, we know that the, 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 the boy didn't spend any uh, money. He didn't spend any money to buy that car. He didn't deserve it. It was a free gift from his father. He just met certain conditions that if his father gave him because that was the condition set by his father because he has the right to determine what conditions to set. So this goes in the same way with salvation. Salvation is through by grace, through faith, and that we are to continue on in faith in order to inherit eternal life, that we are to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. This is the condition that God has set. And so just because there is a condition on it, it doesn't mean that faith is earning salvation. It doesn't mean that because we believe and continue to believe on Jesus Christ, that that somehow may, makes us deserving of eternal life. No, we are sinners, not only before we were saved, but after we have saved, we have sinned. We are in no way deserving of eternal life. We are in no way deserving of salvation, but God has given to us by grace, but we receive it through faith, not only initially through faith, but then we must abide in faith. Let's flip to a verse that we looked at in the last video on this series in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. That means continue to abide in faith. Hold our confidence firm to the end, as it says in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6 and verse 14. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are called and have professed a good uh, profession before many witnesses. Now, some might say, look, in, in your analogy, the, 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 the kid had to study. 
He had to take a test. He had to go to the DMV to get his driver's license. He had to pose for a picture. And so he's earned it. He hasn't earned anything. Both the car dealer and the dad wouldn't say he's earned it. They wouldn't say that he deserves it because he did that. That was just a qualification he had to meet in order to receive the gift from the father that the father pays for. But here it says, fight the good fight of faith. It doesn't say just lay there. It, it says, fight the good fight of faith, that we must continue on in the faith, that we must fight the fight of faith, that we must war against the world, war against the devil, war against sin. We must fight the good fight of faith, holding on to faith in Jesus Christ. And in that way, we lay hold on eternal life. Do we earn eternal life because we fight the fight of faith? No, we remain in the condition that God has established that we should do in order to inherit eternal life. Let's flip over to Hebrews chapter 10. This is uh, the writer of Hebrews speaking to the believers and saying, Remember the former days after you were enlightened, that is after you became a Christian, in which you endured a great struggle of afflictions, almost like you were fighting a fight of faith. In part, you were made a spectacle both of reproaches and afflictions. Why? For their faith in Jesus Christ. And in part, you became companions of those who were so abused. For you had compassion on me, in my chains and joyfully endured the confiscation of your property, property, knowing that you have in heaven a better and an enduring possession for yourselves, knowing that they have eternal life at the right hand of God in Jesus Christ in heaven. Verse 35, therefore do not throw away your confidence, which will be greatly rewarded. For you need patience, so that after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. So is this a reward or is this a promise? Because here it says that don't throw away your confidence by and you will be greatly rewarded. So it sounds like it's something that they fight for in order to get. You earn the reward by fighting, uh, in a, whether it be in a wrestling match or, or fighting in a, in a race, that you do something, you put out effort, and then you're rewarded for it. So does this mean they earned it? No, because it said, for you have need of patience so that after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. The promise is something that is a gift that God has promised it to us, but he's promised it on the condition that we continue on, that we do not throw away your confidence. And he goes on in verse 37. In yet a little while, he who is to come will come and will not wait. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So the just shall live by faith, not just believe by faith one time, but they will live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. In other words, they are not justified before God. They are not pleasing before God. They are not in right standing with God. God will not be pleased with them. We need to see here that there is a, this, this condition that must be met in order to inherit eternal life. Jump over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. Now, brothers... These are saved people. I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which you have received, and in which you stand. You have received it, and now you're standing in it. Though Through it you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. So as long as you continue on in your faith, then you have not believed in vain. But if you turn away from your faith, if you do not stand in the gospel that you were given, then you will have believed in vain. We read this again if we flip over to, uh, let's see, and I think it's going to be 2 second, second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. As workers together with God, we ask you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I have listened to you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Look, now is the accepted time. Look, now is the day of salvation. So what is he saying here? Many times evangelists will say, look, it's not tomorrow. Tomorrow's not the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow, but now is the acceptable time. But here what Paul is arguing is don't receive it in vain. You've already received the grace of God, but don't now think that just because I received it in the past that that's all that is required, that that is the only condition that I believed at one time. No, we must continue on because not yesterday is not the day of salvation, but today is the day of salvation. Not before, but presently, now is the time of salvation. So we must continue on in the condition that God sets. Now, as we ask this question and say, okay, there's a condition, it's a gift, but there's a condition placed on this gift. Are we then supposed to say that, uh, you know, that then we earn it or we deserve it? No, we don't. But the person arguing in this uh, video clip that we just watched, don't they understand that you can receive a gift and it yet have a condition placed on it, but yet be a free gift? Yes, indeed, he does. Let's go ahead and look at another clip.
heart. Nicodemus, you need to be born again. Your first birth was a gift from your parents. You had nothing to do with it, nothing at all. They did the work, went through the pain and paid all the bills, and you got a free gift, life. And your second birth, getting born again, is the same way. It's because of what Jesus did. Now, a Christian, they cannot lose their eternal life. That was a problem from God. But they can lose their rewards. A Christian can sin and lose the rewards that they've been building up, okay? They can lose their joy. They can lose their peace. They can lose their fellowship with God. They could actually lose their life. A couple of verses on that. You can lose your life. You can sin unto death. First John chapter 5. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, he shall give him life for them that sin not. There's a sin unto death. I think a Christian can sin to the point where God says, look, you are an embarrassment. You're one of my children. You're not behaving right. Come home to heaven. Uh, you can't stay there anymore. I'm going to yank you home. So, yes, those are things you can lose, but you cannot possibly lose your salvation. So here the argument is life was a free gift that we didn't earn it we didn't do anything we didn't deserve it we didn't do anything to get life it was all the cost of our parents they were the one that took all the trouble and that life was a free gift and yet then uh, mr hoven goes on to, and continues and says but we can forfeit we can forfeit our life that god can take away our life because we don't meet certain conditions now i think that the conditions he's talking about is uh, sinfulness and he's talking about if we live in sin, then God can uh, punish us and take us away, take away our life. So then that means that he understands that something that is a free gift, because he made it clear that life is a free gift, and it's a free gift, and yet it has conditions. And it's not something we deserved. It's not something we earned. He, I don't believe that he would say that we earned life, that we deserve life. No, that it's a free gift from God through our parents, but we can lose it if we don't continue to walk in certain conditions. So he understands the argument. He understands the biblical concept that a gift can be given upon certain conditions and it can be taken away if we don't meet those conditions. So when someone says that a person must not only trust in Christ, but continue to trust in Christ firmly into the end with their confidence firm in Christ into the end in order to partake of Jesus Christ, is that somehow means that they deserve eternal life? that they are earning eternal life? No, it does not. It means it is a gift, but there is a condition on that gift. And that condition is that we continue in our faith firm until the end. I hope this has been helpful to you. God bless.